Try the crime syndicate. They're not ready. Now, wait a minute. Shut up, Jonas. Took out Eddie Lungotti with this thing. Well, he's a good guy, then. I met 25 guys today who killed their own mother for I got two officers missing. You want to talk to me? Okay, but first we want to tell you why I took the money. Go ahead, I'm game. No, you can't. You're never going to make cast iron. Those are state-of-the-art running shoes, man. I didn't even have them on my feet. Are you saying it's your birthday gift? Yeah, yeah. I live to jog, huh? And a woman size five? Hey, look. Let's cut the dance, okay? I'm a real good friend of Eddie Mulholland's. Never heard of him. Hey, well, he ran two dozen toaster ovens through here last week. If you've got a badge, you're gonna have to prove that. Hey, 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 look, I'm not a cop, man. I'm just a guy with a bunch of shoes he wants to unload, huh? You interested or what? How hot are they? <laughs> the guy didn't even see me lift them off the truck. I'll give you a hundred for the lot. Yeah, well, uh, I'm asking a hundred and fifty. Go to another French. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. Instead of asking a hundred and fifty. Yeah, I'll take you a hundred. Yeah, and three to five when we meet again, Slim. You get them? Yeah, in living color. So that's 12 nickel and dimers in three weeks. I'd say it's roundup time. Yeah, but if we start arresting people, we're gonna blow our cover. <laughs> no kidding, Ike. I know you're having a great time, but this is not your life. You gotta snap out of it. Remember? You like all blue eyes, pinstripe suits, big cars. We've <laughs> Get that sick. We've worked this dive long enough, okay? Well, I just send the rugs out to be cleaned. I'll cancel. I'll cancel. We have addresses and names of each of the 12 suspects from the tape. Did you run NCICs and fill out a 730 on them? Of course we did. Did we do that? Yeah, sure we did. See, we did all that stuff. That stuff is procedure, Jonas. Right. Uh, look, our covers can't hold out forever, Lieutenant, and these guys aren't going to stick around forever, so it's roundup time. Give us the old green light. Okay. Notify Lieutenant Shapiro in motor transport and get a mobile command post van, 20 portables, and a paddy wagon. Write that down. I want one uniform patrol unit with each detective unit. 
We'll go as soon as I get your equipment request. The warrant's signed by a judge and an okay from the DA's office. Yeah. Sir, I would like to ask you a little... Here you go. Yo, Brown. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Can you guys hear me out there? Can you hear me? I think you've got their attention. Okay, listen up. Ike and I are going to be in the communications van. I want all arrests reported as they happen, okay? Now, we're going to be on TAC frequency simplex 5, and I want no excess yapping on the walkies, all right? Now, I've got... Nine till we move on the hour, okay? On the hour. You want to say something? Should I? Yeah, sure. Go for it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm Assistant DA St. Jean. Nice to meet you, sir. I'm Mike Porter. This is my partner, Tony Jonas. Hi. I just want to touch base with you. I'll be handling the prosecution side of this operation. Put on the coffee pot, Mr. DA, because we're going to be keeping you busy. Uh-huh. Well, okay. Well, that's good. And we'll be seeing each other again. so excited about it. <laughs> you gonna say something yeah. or what? All right. <clears throat> Hello. All I really want to do is express our appreciation in advance for what hey. we're all gonna do today. Check it out. Zaga's coming for a send-off. And especially our leadership, uh, in particular Lieutenant Zaga, who has supported us. In... All right, that's it. This operation is over. Get the vehicles in the garage and back to your normal routine. What the hell was that? Is this something you said? Zaga has been planning this all day. I know it. Yeah. I must have misfiled a request form or something. No, no. He did everything by the book. He just got cold feet. I misfiled a fire permit a couple of years ago for Chief Fulbright's roast retirement dinner. The fire marshal shut the whole place down when they brought out the cherry flambe. Uh-huh. Who's he talking to, anyway? I don't know. Where are you going? To find out what's going on. Oh, no, that's not a good idea. You two. Inside. Take a load off your feet, gentlemen. Okay, you're Porter and Jonas? I'm Jonas, he's Porter. Gardens, organized crime. What do you know? Hmm. About what? They don't know nothing. Let them out clean, Gardens. I got your opinion, Lieutenant. I want theirs. I'm sure we'll have an opinion once you tell us what we're supposed to have an opinion about. My office checks all surveillance tapes in the department. Yours got to me because of an interesting wrinkle. We got three separate pictures, three separate dates, one common image. His name is Albert Moont. He's a point man for the West Coast Crime Syndicates. In our pawn shop? In my precinct. We should step on him now. Well, this is mine, Zaga. I want to know what he's doing here before we start stepping on anything. Oh, you mean just because this bent-nosed bozo dropped by our shop, you called off a well-timed, well-organized arrest sweep? I want that block as quiet as Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Uh, how do we do that? By doing exactly what you've been doing the last three weeks. Uh-huh. That means I have to get my bowling shirt out of the cleaners. You know, I think all of this is very exciting. <laughs> Come on, Ike. Some low life browsing the shop isn't exactly confetti time. No, but this is organized crime. This is really big stuff. Yeah, well, I'll believe that when I wake up next to a horse's head. Would you mind using a fork? You sound like my mother. I think your mother would be very pleased to know that you're still using utensils. No, no, no. My mother told me not to eat with my mouth open. Nothing about hands. Mike? I never asked you this. How come you don't have any kids to teach salad bowl etiquette to? Well, when Maureen was ready, I was busy. And then when I was ready, she was busy. When we were both ready, it was too late. Fifty dollars. For 34 years, my Sam played this tuber. And you're going to show so much disrespect to offer me only $50. 55. Deal. 
He never was the same since that thing fell off the shelf and hit him on the head. Kept playing German marches all night. There you are, Mrs. Zimmer. You're a nice boy, Chick. <laughs> Much better than that, Mr. Greenspan. Ran this place like a business. No wonder they shot him. You. I got a granddaughter I want you to meet. Uh, I've already got a girlfriend, Mrs. Zimmer. So what's the matter with two? Your granddaughter wouldn't mind. Are you kidding? She'll take what she can get. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Zimmer. Bye. Oh, boy, a tuba, just what we need. It's yours for 60 bucks. Can I help you? No. But maybe I can help you. Oh, yeah? You give tuba lessons? <laughs> you got a good kid. He's cocky. Just like I was when I was a kid. Name's Albert Moons. Ah, yeah, yeah. I'm Ike uh, Tubason. This is my kid, Tony. Tony Tubason. I know. I've been watching you, too. And I got a little offer I think you might be very interested in. What do you mean he thinks you're father and son? Well, he kind of jumped to the conclusion. And we kind of agreed with him. He's been checking us out for a couple of weeks, and he says that we remind him of his dad and himself. <laughs> his dad is Fitzmoon. Passed away in an electric chair a couple years ago. What's the offer? He wants us to think about a bigger market. Where to call him if we're interested? You're interested. Have him for dinner. To the apartment? Yeah. Find him and invite him. Make him feel at home. Well, fish and a cob salad, I think, would be right. You too. Follow me. Now, wait a minute. They're undercover on ongoing operations, Zaga. Book says they use the back door, and they stay down here. You got an office we can use? I have departmental approval, the deputy chief's authorization, and the DA's blessing. You got a street cop with six years under his belt, and the next PR song and dance. Hey, I didn't pick him. Albert Moon did. They're not ready. Now, wait a minute. Shut up, Jonas. You make a mistake with organized crime, and you end up face down in the dirt. If they're cover holes, we got somebody inside a crime syndicate, and a line of cutting off some gambling and prostitution. Maybe stopping some kid from shooting some dope up his arm. Porter, you got anything to say? Well, I don't know, sir. Uh... You both have made very valid points. Uh, certainly, we're not the most experienced, in fact, we're the least experienced men for this undercover work, but sometimes fate steps in and makes you her choice. Fate? You realize what you're walking into? I can't speak for Tony. But speak for me. I have no idea. I do know that if we pass up this opportunity, which apparently may close up any time, we're not doing the department or the people out there any good. And how about you? I think we can handle it. You protect them day and night. If I get one whiff of something going wrong, I'm pulling them out. You're not walking into a picnic. Yes, sir. Forget all that. We got the best people possible to help you get ready for this. I mean, every, every side of you is going to be put under a microscope. But you pay close attention. What you learn might save your lives. Now, which of these two relationships are you most comfortable with? Dennis. This is difficult. But I have to go with Pinocchio. French fries. Wait until I ask the question. <laughs> My answer is still going to be French fries because I like French fries. I relate to French fries. I understand French fries. How much longer do we have to go on with this stuff? All right, all right. I'm not going to play games with you guys. In undercover work, we don't have time to intellectualize or fantasize. We've got to get right to ground zero. Tell me about this. What's to tell? It's a couple with their kid at the beach. You know what I mean. Tell me what you see here. Well, it's an idealized relationship. It's the nuclear family in a serene setting. Look closer. Oh, I get it. That's a periscope. There's a sub out there. Good. Good. Go on. Yeah, I mean, that's the nuclear family, and there's a submarine out there. 
There's no submarine out there. Doctor, what are you looking for? Uh, is this some symbology we're supposed to grasp? I mean, you're looking for larger concepts? All I'm looking for is what you are looking for. What are we looking for? We have a situation here where we need to know about you two as father and son. I mean, for example, uh, are you, say, the father that he has always been looking for, huh? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. All right. Are you perhaps the son that he never had, but that he always kind of you know, wished he had? I don't know. Okay. Or is he the son you've been looking for just because he's never home? He's never there for you. He doesn't care. He doesn't give you what you need. He's not involved. He doesn't care about you. Is that it? Is that what it is? Wait a minute. No. Oh. oh, this is good. I feel confusion here. Yeah, me too. What the hell is going on? What is going on here is that in four hours, you two are going to go out and be intimately involved with a man who already believes you to be father and son. So what's the big deal? The big deal is, psychologically speaking, I, for one, don't buy it for a single minute. Well, we're working on the family resemblance angle. The pawn shop is clear. We pulled out the video equipment and the mics. We're alone, then. That's right. You're Ike and Tony... Tubison? You had to be there. Well, these are your new driver's licenses, credit cards, all your other ID. Guns, badges, everything. Put them in here. You want my gun? The moon can spot a police issue going away. Well, fine, then give me a flamethrower. I need some protection here. Here's a wireless transcender. Activate that. We'll hit you with everything we got. You're just leaving me naked here? Look, Jonas, if you're maid, you're not going to win in a firefight. Your best protection is your mind. Breathe, eat, and think you're covered 24 hours a day. Have you contacted Moon? Yeah, he's dropping by around 7. How are you feeling? I got about to pick up Sarah Hedges for a second date of the drive-in. I feel exactly the same. I don't even know Sarah Hedges. It's all right. You'll be fine. Look, stay away from the station. If you want me, pay phone is the cleanest. Good luck. Listen, before we take off, do you mind if I ask you a quick question? Sure. Who do you think has a better relationship with their father, Dennis the Menace or Pinocchio? How you doing, lady? You know, for a pawnbroker, Ike, you make one nice piece of chicken. Well, I learned how to cook from Vinnie the Bat. No wonder. How did you like your swordfish, Sylvie? I thought it was delicious. Especially the part with the little bacon bits on the top. That's real good, Sylvie, real good. Then why don't you go in the kitchen and clean up? No, she don't have a dad. But... What do you think I brought her for? Okay. <clears throat> Pretty classy, huh, kid? Remind me to pick one up for you. That is, if it's all right with your old man. Hey, it's the modern generation. Just like my old man. I knew there was something right about you. I'm sorry, Albert. It just slipped. I'm very sorry. I hope it wasn't a personal treasure. Oh, geez, honey, don't, don't even worry about it. It ain't nothing. She feels real bad, Ike, I can tell. Don't worry, though. I'll restock your entire kitchen. I feel real comfortable here, Ike. Well, we love this place. So you want to get out of this stuff? What are you pulling in from that pawn shop? Enough. I don't play games, fellas. The street brings me lots of interesting noises. You too. We're a very pleasant surprise. It takes a class act to convince the neighborhood you clean when you're really running a hot shop. Just what is it we could do for you? Like I said, I just want to raise your standard of living. How much higher? Well, my organization has recently come into possession of several television sets. How many several? I don't know. How many can you get in the back of a semi? He wants us to move a truckload of TVs in 24 hours. Have you seen them? Yeah, yeah, with the import tanks still on. He must have lifted them right off the ship. Where are they at now? Uh, I'm loading them back. Listen, gardens, we've got them. 
When do we bust them? Hello? There's not going to be any bust. I want to play this out. Play it out? What play it out? Listen to me. He's testing you. You win this, we move up the ladder. Up the ladder? Where? Move the TVs, we'll find out. We're cops. We don't sell stolen merchandise. You can to other cops. In other words, all we have to do is sell 200 TVs to 200 undercover cops. There aren't that many undercover cops, are there? Well, Garden said he'd handle all that. We give them TVs, they give us marked money. Then what? What do you mean, then what? Well, what happens after we move all the TVs? Well, we move up the ladder. Up the ladder? I asked these same questions, Ike. And what did he say? What I'm telling you. That's basically nothing. Basically. Is that normal? Ike, this is all new to me, too. Well, then, all right. We just have to move these TVs and all this is over. I think that's the thought for the day. Okay, then. Let's move some TVs. Mr. Zimmer, I'm not really interested. Dad, we got one TV left and a half hour to go. Good. Hey, uh, how much you want for it? I'm sorry, the TV is not for sale. I got cash, and I'll and I'll throw in a symbol. <laughs> Mrs. Zimmer, I don't think you understand. This is a very special TV to us. We really don't want to part with it. It is for my granddaughter, birthday gift. You're a nice guy. You don't want to break a little girl's heart, do you? Keep your hands in sight. What are you doing? I'll tell you what he's doing. He's busting your butts. You want to tell us why? Selling stolen goods, piece of tooth rot. Read them their rights. These two are going downtown. Just hold it, Buster. I, I come for that TV set. Well, I'm sorry, madam. Well, we're just going to have to hold everything until the hearing. Okay. But you keep my name on it, right? Right. Bye, Mrs. Zimmer. Come back. What the hell is going on? Zaga wants you both in. In the middle of an operation? I didn't ask. I just jumped at the chance to humiliate you in public. Turn around so I can cuff you. Lane, we are probably being watched. Yeah, by who? By organized crime. So you can't tip our cover. Do you understand? Okay, guys, I've dealt these cards before. You want to show? Go ahead, I'm game. Yeah! I think we made this look too good. I know we are. We gotta get in. Saga wants us in. What are we gonna do? I don't know. Moon's probably watching. Hey, fellas. <laughs> Where you going? You look like you could use the lift out of here. Thank you very much. Here. Thank you, sir. All right. Here we go. What do you mean they got away? Well, sir, they wanted to make the arrest look as real as possible so their cover would remain intact. And? 
And I think I did my part very well. When it came time for the roundup, Gordon insisted on driving. I lost him. Stay here. I'm not done with you yet. Don't ever put me in the back seat again. I got two officers missing. You want to talk to me? Yeah. The next time you step on one of my operations, I'm going to have you in front of review. My men are in danger price. or are involved in an operation that I feel could endanger their lives. Don't read the book to me. This is my operation. Where are Porter and Jonas? We've been tracking them all day. Moot has them. What? Where are they? Right where we want them. Anything you want. <laughs> See, a couple of the West Coast bosses thought that a very private, very secure club would be a nice idea. There it is. Huh? Yeah. It's beautiful. We got everything here. Everything. Except the inconvenience of a cop sticking his nose in your yeah. face. Right? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Sure. Hi. Hey. Serve me, baby. <laughs> you remember Mr. Tuberson and his son? Of course. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I just wrote you a thank you note for dinner the other night. That's nice. I'm telling you, just being around me, she picks up class, huh? Mm. Okay, get lost. Sure. Nice to see you again. Very nice. Hi, Sylvie. So I really haven't had a chance to thank you for all your hard work. Yeah, we've got a lot of cash in here. I know. And I want you to deliver it personally. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. That's very funny. But I want you to deliver it to my employer. Mm -hmm. I'll be flying in tomorrow, and I think, uh, I think he'll be very impressed with what I brought him. That's very nice. Let's go. Yeah. I want indisputable proof that their cover is intact. Nobody, and I mean nobody who's not completely trusted, has gone through the gates of that fortress. They're fine, Zaga. Psychologically, what are we talking about? Well... The shrink report says that separately they might slip a little bit. But together, because of their, their father-son bonding, they should be in complete control. No. Get off it. You're crazy, you know that? We've got the call card. Oh, obviously. Obviously. How are we going to do that? How do I know? I got an idea. What? If we call from here, we use a code. What code? I don't know. We make one up. How do they know what the code is? How would I know that? What is this radio? The wall, the wall might be bugged. The room is not bugged. If the room was bugged, this would be beeping. Why didn't you show me that before? I'm sorry, I forgot, okay? You know, if I were really your father, I'd be not I'm really my father. Father. Yes? It's Sylvie! Dad, it's Sylvie. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah let her in, let her in. Oh, really? Sylvie. Let her in, son. Hi. Hi. I thought you might like a little snack before bedtime. I always have some cookies and milk. Oh, that looks great. <laughs> Albert asked me to kind of keep an eye on you tomorrow. Uh. Well, you know, kind of show you around. Yeah. 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 But he said that if you didn't want me to, I should just get out of your way. Well, do you want to show us around? Me? Yeah. Well, sure, I don't mind. <laughs> nice. I... Ike, you gotta try this. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, funny. What? You called your father by his first name. <laughs> oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. We Hi, call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. called me Ike. Yeah, I love Ike. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, I used to do the very same thing. Oh, only his name was Milton. But I never called him Daddy. Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, by the way, did you happen to look in your closet? Oh, yeah, someone left some pretty weird clothes in there. I did. Well, they were for you. You, you got the clothes for us, huh? Yeah, Albert told me to. Are they okay? Yeah, see, what it is is everything he likes. <laughs> he, he calls it weird. <laughs> He's a good kid. Yeah. He calls me weird. He's a nice oh. kid, huh? <laughs> if you don't like them, I can always get you something else. Oh, silly, no, I'm sure they'll be just fine. <laughs> you look wonderful. Right. Well, tell me you gotta have every keen sense of style. I guess we're ready for it. Well, where would you like to start? Well, what are our choices? Oh! Yeah, this clay bird junk is for kids. Come on, let's have some real fun. I hate moving targets. Yeah. So, you ever been to Detroit? No, not in years. Not Detroit, no. You look familiar. Yeah? Yeah, I'm Red Frank. Sometimes I'm Red Franklin. Frank Weber? Oscar Redding? You never heard of me? Oh! July. Yeah, it depends where he grew up, I guess. How about Bobby Nails? Bobby Nails? Well, I was the guy who blew him away last year. Well, give it a shot. Oh, no, I shouldn't. Why, doesn't Albert want you to? Well, no, it's just that I've never done it before. So big deal. Give it a try. Come on, it's a piece of cake. Really? Your left hand right there, yeah. Okay, now mount to your shoulder. Oh. Right there, on the shoulder. Okay, cheekbone on the oh, stock. Heavy. Yeah, I, okay, okay. Now put a little trigger, not yet. Oh. Okay. Now aim where the bird is. Yeah. When it comes out, lead it and bang. Okay. 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 What do you say? Pull. Right, there it goes. Wait. Oh. Oh. Nice shot. I, did. I can't believe it. Yeah, I you did. did it. You did it. Yeah. How do I do it? Oh, you put it down right here. So you don't shoot somebody. I did. <laughs> You said guns aren't stimulating. <laughs> Great, yeah. Um, what do you say we go uh, look at the pool or something? Okay. Yeah. Want to give it a grind? Uh, I tell you, I'm not familiar with that kind of weapon. All you got to do is squeeze the trigger. The bullet does the rest. You got Eddie Lungati with this thing? Yeah. I got to go to a putting green, all right? I met Albert about a year ago. He saved my life. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I was selling lingerie in the pool store down on First Street. Well, what's the story with you and Albert? Are you guys engaged or what? Albert doesn't believe in marriage. He believes that a man should never be held down by a woman, and that's what marriage does. Yeah, that sounds about right. You think so? Uh... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever works. <laughs> Sometimes I think Albert's really off base. Really? Well, yeah, you know. Sometimes he's really bossy, and he doesn't like to talk about certain things. You know, like his business and personal things. Yeah, well, that makes sense. You think so? Uh, yeah. Gilbert... Oh, he's this guy that I was dating before I met Albert. He always thought we should talk about everything. Well, that's not so bad. Oh, no. Sometimes I think it's a lot better. Sometimes I really miss Gilbert. You know, somebody to talk to. Yeah, well, do you still talk to him, or...? No, Albert doesn't like it when I do. Oh. But sometimes, when I get kind of sad... I call him. Yeah. Does he listen? Yeah. Well, he's a good guy, then. Yeah. But I'm better off here, though. Albert takes care of me, and this is a home. 
find out? Kind of, huh? I want to tell you a little story. It's about a guy I know, older guy. He had a great job. Cush job, made lots of money. And he threw it away. You know what? Because he woke up one morning and he figured out that he'd been lying to himself. And he was very, very unhappy. I could never do that. You couldn't shoot a clay bird out of the sky until you tried. Right? Tony! Yeah. Hey! Hello, Mr. Tubison. Hi, Zoe. Uh, Zoe, honey, would you excuse us for a minute? Sure. Thanks. See you at the party, Tony. Okay. And thanks. Sure. Uh, so long, honey. Why is she kissing you? Well, oh, she's a sweet, confused kid, and I'm a nice guy. I forbid you to see her. You forbid me? What are you, my father? You, please, don't have any more deep conversations with her. Deep? Me? With a girl? Dad, you know me better than that. You have a point there. Okay, let's get dressed for dinner, dump the cash, and get out of here. Yes, good. The money's not there. What do you mean the money's not there? It's not there. It's got to be there. I put it there myself. Somebody took it. Who would have taken it? I met 25 guys today who killed their own mother for it. Only Moot knew about the money, right? But he wouldn't take it. He's in this as deep as we are. Sylvie. Sylvie knew everything. I can't believe she'd take it. What did you two talk about? We had a little pep talk. I built up her confidence. Maybe more than I thought. She's probably downstairs at the party. She's probably halfway to Kansas. Porter. Say, Gene, what's he doing here? Well, he's still out. This is a nice shot, Muhammad. Thanks. You know, this is one hell of a place to run into a crooked DA. What do we do with him now? I have no idea. If that DA opens his mouth, we're going to be underwater monuments. Well, they haven't found him yet, so we're okay. I see no reason to panic. Open up, it's Albert. I do. When Mr. Dragger drops by, we always like to get dressed up. Oh, yeah, that's great. I'll bet these will fit real good, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sylvie said she put some dress shirts in here. Oh, yeah, hey, hey, you don't have to go hang stuff up. The kid will yeah, that. Right. Yeah, 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 sure. Listen, Albert. Albert, listen to me, I'll tell you something. Albert, I gotta, I gotta tell you something. What is it, Ike? You seem a little tense. Yeah, I'm tense, I'm tense. That's what I am, I'm tense. You know why I'm tense? Why? I'm tense because I'm very nervous. You know why I'm nervous? Why? Because I gotta meet this man. No, 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 no. Would I steer you wrong? Do you yeah. trust me? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Traggett is a prince among men. This is gonna be a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake. Now, listen, this is what I want you to do. I will do it. I want the two of you to get into your monkey suits. Right. You come on downstairs yeah. and have a couple of cocktails before you go in, all right? Cocktails! Dad loves cocktails! I drink them right up, huh? <laughs> all right, okay? Yeah, yeah. So I'll see you in ten minutes. Ten minutes. Hey. All right? Yeah. All right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. Okay, we can't okay, we dress. We find Sylvie, right? Fine. Okay. All right, yeah, come on. Hi, we got to talk to you. Okay, but first we want to tell you why I took the money. We were supposed to deliver that money, Sylvie. Oh, I know, to Mr. Traggett. Mm -hmm. Where is it, honey? I really didn't mean to upset you, Mr. Tubison. Sylvie, we have a meeting in ten minutes, so if you can just... Uh... Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Well, first of all, I think it's best that I leave Albert and, and start a new life like that man you were telling me about. And you thought the money would be a nice start for you and Gilbert. Oh, no, that's not it. You think I took that money for myself? Well, that's it, isn't it? I took it so that you wouldn't have to deliver it. And Mr. Traggett wouldn't, wouldn't want you to stay here. 
so that you two wouldn't get more involved with these people. Some of them aren't very nice. Honey, that was real sweet, but you know what's going to happen to us if we don't deliver that stuff? See, the money don't belong to us, it belongs to Traggett, and if we don't give it to him, he's going to do more than slap us on the wrist. Really? Oh, really? It's always like this, Tony. Every time I get up enough nerve to do something, I always mess it up. No, no, what you did, it was real nice. It was stupid. I'm really sorry, Mr. Tudison. I'll get the money. Mike, we gotta get her out of here. We will. The right time and place. made me look very good in there. Very good. Mr. Traggett wants you to keep half the money. Really? Now listen to me. I want you to relax and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Have a good time. Whatever you want. All right? And I want you to consider becoming associates of ours. Associates? Hey, we see talent and we go after it. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Do yourself a favor. Well, that was relatively painless. Let's try to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. Have a nice, quiet weekend, and then we're out of here. Quiet is nice. I like quiet. Mm. St. Jean. What? Right up there. Let's cut the quiet weekend short. Jump. Yeah. Get the transcender. I already did. So right. come here. We haven't been exactly honest with you, but it's time that we were. We're police officers. We've been undercover, but that's all over now. We have to get out of here, and there's no time left. Honey, I know you want to leave this place, and I will do everything that I can to make that possible. So will I. Oh, you don't have to do anything for me. Just go around to the front. My keys are in the car. Oh, it's a black sports car. And I'll open the gate for you. Great. Hey, hey, time out. 15 yards, penalty. Right. Let's go. Right. See you. Hurry. Yeah. Disappear. I mean, these guys are organized. If they want us, they'll find us. Yeah, the gardens must have some contingency plan for this sort of thing. All right, we're not idiots. We can think of something. But you know, if your girlfriend doesn't get that gate open very soon, we're not going to have much time to think. So get it open. But you're sure of that? Yes. Good. Hold on, I'm going through it. No, you can't. You're never going to make cast iron. You're not going to make it. We got a red light. All right, get it out to all units. We're moving. Peterson, pal, follow those guys that just left. The rest of you on me.
a neat little trick. Piece of cake. We're never going to do it again, right? Right. No argument here. Okay. At eight, seven cents for the mountain. The victims found in the fatal crash were identified as Ike Tuberson and his son, Tony, owners and operators of Ike's Ponorama on Jefferson and First. In the raid, police officers arrested crime syndicate boss T.L. Traggett and several members of his organization. <clears throat> Investigators said that over $100,000 in marked bills linking the crime syndicate to a fencing ring was found in their possession. Deputy DA arrested. The Attorney General's office announced today that an assistant district attorney was taken into custody, apparently after an inside tip connected him to organized crime. Welcome back, boys. Hey, Lane. Hey, listen, we owe you a big thanks. You know, that little punch I threw you really set us up perfectly. Well, I'm just here to serve, Jonas. Little punch. You two settled back in the nest? It's great to be back, sir. We picked up this Sylvie Roten. If you're interested, they're going to work out a relocation program for her in exchange for some insight into the criminal elements out here. Sounds like everyone's a winner. Hmm? Yeah. So, we'll see you in the morning. Right. We'll be here, sir. All right. Tell them they did a good job. Go on. They put their necks out there and hung tough. What's the matter? You can't tell a fellow officer they did a good job when they did a good job. But those two? Not yet. Next on The Oldest Rookie. I saw you take cocaine out of the evidence room and I saw you mail it. What is this? I'm your superior officer, Porter. You don't question me. some kind of trouble. I just found out there's a cop in here. Look, if you want to kill him, somebody else will. Later tonight, the Equalizer joins the search for a strangler. But first, is a mother's love blinded by blackmail? Eileen Brennan and Celeste Holmgast on Magnum P.I. next.